about you, but I love him this morning. I appreciate him for what he means to me. I thank him so much. He's so merciful and so graceful. Amen. And his ways are above our ways. And sometimes you wonder, you know, why God continues to bless us the way he does whenever, amen, we don't seem to be able to do the things that he'd have us to do with a very much high success rate. We feel sometimes like we, we don't please the Lord as we would like to. Amen. But he's mindful of us, and he knows, amen, this morning our weaknesses. He knows our hearts this morning. Amen. Many of us this morning, how many of you is, uh, is satisfied, amen, where you are? Amen. I, I'm not. I want more of him. Amen. I want a hunger and a desire for more of God. Amen. And we've been preaching a lot, amen, on Wednesday nights in our, our prayer meeting, amen, about maturity and growing in the Lord. Amen. Because God would not have us to sit still, amen, and just rest on what we've received so far. But he wants us to have a desire and a hunger for more. Amen. And this morning, I, we, we, uh, we Sunday school lesson last week. Today, this week's been about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I've uh, I made the uh, remarks, amen, that if you don't, amen, or if you can't say that you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I uh, don't want you to feel bad or feel like you're less than, but we want to create a hunger in you, amen, for more of God. Amen. And... Uh, I liken it to a child, amen. Uh, my babies didn't know what chicken was, amen, until they got a taste of it. And when they got a taste of it, then they wanted more of it, amen. And that's the way the church is, amen. A lot of people, amen, been in church all their life, but they're babes in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. But if you can ever get a taste, amen, of this sweet Holy Ghost, amen, you'll have a desire for more of it, amen. And whenever you do, you'll hunger, amen, you'll have a hunger. You'll push away, amen, those beans, amen, and that strewed carrots. and, Amen, you, uh, you'll turn down those, uh, those artichokes and all that stuff. You'll say, give me some more of that meat that was on that bone, amen, and you'll desire, amen, for the depths of God. Amen, I love him this morning, and I appreciate him, and I thank him for what he means to me. If you have your Bibles this morning you want to read with us, I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Amen, 2 Corinthians chapter Number four, amen, I want to preach on the, the subject this morning, amen, it's not, it's but a light affliction, amen, I want to preach from the thought this morning, it's but a light affliction, amen, I know what you're going through this morning seems, amen, impossible, what you're going through this morning, the weight of what's on your shoulders may seem more than you can bear, uh, I understand this morning the doctor's news or, amen, the news you may have received from a lawyer, the news you may have received from a uh, from an official seems to be more than you can handle. But this morning it is but a light affliction, amen, to the child of God. And we want to go through this and understand why, amen, that what's placed on our shoulders, amen, we can bear, amen, if we allow God, amen, to work through us, amen. The Bible tells us that he is our burden bearer, amen. The Bible tells us, amen, Peter told us, amen, the third chapter of it, he said to cast your care, amen, upon him, for he careth for you, amen. The care, amen, is the burden, amen, that comes upon the heart, amen, uh, and the shoulder somewhat of the child of God. Uh, we understand today, amen, that the enemy of our soul, amen, is purposed, amen, to discourage you and I from making, amen, heaven our home at the end of this journey, amen. His sole purpose, amen, is to discourage and to tear you apart, amen, piece by piece, any means necessary, amen, so that you will not have faith or exhibit faith or trust in the Lord with all of your heart. That is his sole purpose, amen, to discourage, amen, and to tear down, amen, the child of God. And because of this, amen, many a thing we go through in this life, amen, good and bad, amen, uh, but yet what comes my way, amen, it is, amen, for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. It is, amen, to build and to encourage and strengthen, amen, and lift me up, amen, and to give me more weapon or, or give me more ability, amen, to yield that which God has given me. Uh, nothing has come the child of God's way uh, that God's not using that, amen, as a means, amen, to strengthen and encourage, amen, and to help, amen, to edify and to build up uh, so that when we face, amen, the more treacherous problems that are coming our way, uh, we will not shrink back in fear, uh, but rather we will go at it, amen, uh, in the name of Jesus, amen, and defeat that which, amen, Satan is trying to come against us with, amen. If you got your Bibles and you're there at chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, say amen. 
Amen. Look at with me. Amen. For verse number uh, 14. Amen. 14 through 18. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us or shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are what? For your sakes. That the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not. Amen. Now that phrase, for all things are for our sakes, is very important. Remember that throughout the course of this message. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Somebody say amen. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There's a purpose behind the suffering. Amen. There's a purpose behind the trouble. What you're going through is not meant to destroy you, but is to work a far more eternal weight. Amen. Eternal, amen, and exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Dear Heavenly Father, you know this need today. Father, you're able today, Lord, to strengthen your people. Father, you're able today, Father, through this message today, Lord, to encourage, Lord, each and every heart that's here. And, Father, I pray today, Lord, open the ears and the hearts, Lord. Father, those that are standing underneath or underneath of this ministry this morning. Father, that which is spoken, Lord, will come, Lord, from you this morning, not from me. Father, but it will float through me this morning, to, uh, Father, to help, to lift up, to encourage, Lord, uh, each and every one that's here this morning. Father, you know the need that come through that door. Father, you know the word that needs to be spoke this morning, Father, to lift up your people this morning. Uh, Father, we put our trust, our hope, and our faith in you this morning to lead God, bless, touch, and direct. In Jesus' name, we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. So we're thinking about this uh, subject this morning, amen. It's but a light affliction. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say it's but a light affliction? Amen. What I'm going through is a light affliction. Amen. Right now, you may not be able to say that. Amen. Right now, your problem may seem like a mountain. Amen. Uh, right now, what you're going through, your trouble, your trial, uh, it may be in family. It may be in work. It may be just a, a general uh, a problem. It may be in the body. Uh, I don't necessarily know what your problem is. Uh, amen. Or what you're facing. Amen. That's got you distraught. Uh, or what the enemy's using to buffet you with. Uh, but one thing I do know uh, is that what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary, amen, afforded us not only victory, amen, uh, or love, but afforded us victory, amen, uh, so that every single day uh, we could walk, amen, in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, uh, and not, amen, uh, be underneath the foot, amen, of the enemy. I've been given authority by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, amen, whom I'm a part of the family of God, amen, when I said yes to him uh, and accepted him into my heart and life, uh, I passed from death to life, amen, uh, and now I've lived in me uh, and gives me the authority amen uh, to speak against those things uh, which Satan would use to destroy and tear down uh, but through Jesus Christ who strengthens us uh, we can look him in the eye amen and say lay what you want to uh, on this old boy uh, but it's a light affliction when I consider the eternal weight amen of glory which shall be mine I don't know about you this morning amen but the enemy would love nothing more than to pile up on you, amen, everything that he can so that you begin to question, why me? You begin to say, Lord, why? God, didn't I put a little in the offering plate? God, I even went to Wednesday night service. Lord, I'm doing everything I know to do. Even said prayer a few nights before I went to bed. Me and my wife, we read a couple of verses. God, we're doing everything we know to do, uh, but it seems like every time I turn around, uh, the flat tire on my truck, uh, the oil need to be changed, uh, the babies are hungry, the check ain't coming in. Uh, it seems like, God, that there's just always, uh, amen, trouble at my house. Uh, amen, and that's the enemy, uh, amen, needling and guiding you uh, and trying to discourage you and to get you uh, to look away from God uh, instead of looking to God. Uh, but when 
we look to God, uh, we can say, amen, greater is he that's in me uh, than he that's in the world. Uh, when we look to God, uh, we can say, amen, I can do all things uh, through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Uh, when we look to God, uh, we can say, amen, greater is he, amen. Amen, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. We can shout, amen, uh, in the sense, amen, of confidence uh, and faith, amen, of sure foundation underneath our feet uh, that what's coming at me uh, is not to destroy me, but it is to lift me up and to help me fight this devil. But if we ever begin to look away from God, we start saying, why me? Amen. We begin to say, oh, woe is me. Oh, it's another trouble. It's another trial. Amen. When the child of God gets their eyes off of God and begins to look, amen, at the storm, begins to look at the things, amen, which is coming against them. Amen. The Bible says that Peter, amen, stepped out of the boat, uh, amen, when he saw Christ, amen. At first they were all afraid and thought it was a spirit. Amen. But then Peter recognizing, uh, amen, when he said, It is I, be not afraid. Uh, amen. Peter said, If it's you, Lord, bid me to come on the water. Amen. When he kept his eyes on him, uh, he was able, amen, to traverse over the top, amen, of that which could defeat him. Uh, I don't know about you, but amen, if Peter can walk on water uh, it with faith in Christ, uh, you and I can do a little walking too, amen, if we will just look to him, uh, amen, and get our eyes off of the trouble. Turn your eyes to him. He said it's a lot of affliction. Well, let's get into this line by line, precept by precept. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. This was the Apostle Paul's confirmation. Amen. That he says, we're ministering to you. Uh, and that same gospel that, amen, raised up Jesus from the dead. Amen. In other words, the truth, amen, of God is the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, God raised him from the dead. He's also going to raise us up also. In other words, my confidence is not only in this life do I have hope, but it's in that which is to come. Amen. I'm not just trying to make it down here, but I'm a laying up my treasures, amen, on the other side, amen. I'm not just worried about the here and now. It's going to, God's going to take care of that. But my concern is my eternal weight in glory. Hallelujah. So he says here, he says, Knowing, amen, that he which raised up the Lord shall raise us up also. Now, confidence has to be this morning, amen, that this is not all there is, but there is that which is to come, which is far more than what is here. In other words, he's blessed me here, but there's far more on the other side. Amen. If a child of God can't believe that this morning, amen, you're going to be of all men most miserable. Why? Because Paul said if in this life only we have hope, uh, we are of all men most miserable. Why? Because that which is to come, amen, is eternal. Amen. It'll never end. Amen. There'll be no day, no night. Amen. It'll be a perfect land of peace and joy. Amen. Some of us can't wait to get there. Some of us has been on hell on earth. Amen. Some of us has gone through some things. Amen. Some of us has had to endure some trouble and trial. The enemy has tried to discourage you, and he's tried his best to tear you down. And even at this very present time, uh, amen, trouble and trial are at your door. Uh, amen. Even, amen, after the years and years you've put in service, amen, for the kingdom of God. Uh, but the enemy ain't stopping, amen. So what does that tell you and me? Amen. We've got to keep pressing. We've got to keep pushing. There's no place to sit down. There's no time to rest. There's no time to back up. We must be advancing for the kingdom of God uh, if we expect, amen, to make it at the end of this journey. Hallelujah. He said, knowing this, amen, this gives us the precept, amen, the foundation in Christ Jesus. He came, he lived, he died, he rose. I don't know about you and I, but I came, I've lived. There's going to come a day I'm going to die. There's going to come a day I'm going to rise again. Why? Because I believe and I trust, amen, in that which Christ Jesus did for me. Paul told us, amen, he said, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you shall never die. Amen. Jesus told him himself, amen, if you believe in me, amen, you shall not taste of death, amen. He did not or they did not understand uh, the difference between the natural death and the spiritual death, amen. But when I accepted Jesus Christ, amen, I died to the old man uh, and this new man, amen, shall never taste death, uh, but he shall live on in glory, amen, for eternity. Does it mean anything to you? Amen. To know that Jesus is coming. Amen. And that you're going to escape. Amen. 
that which is to come upon this earth. Or is it, does it mean anything to you this morning? Now, if it does, amen, then that means, amen, that you put some, or some stock, amen, into that which you're doing on this earth. Amen. And I thought about it this way. If Paul, amen, convinced or tells us, uh, amen, he says, for all things are for our sakes. Amen. In other words, we all want some good, but nobody wants any bad. When we begin to understand that all things are for our sakes, amen, it's not just the preaching on TV, amen, that tells us about how good everybody is uh, and that if we sow this, we're going to get a blessing, amen. Uh, it's not just about, amen, uh, that all things, amen, work together for good, amen, uh, but yet they forget, amen, that there are some bad things that work in that as well. You don't hear much about that. Why? Because it don't fill the church up. Nobody wants to hear about the trouble that's coming my way, but can I tell you something? Amen. We're not going to stand before God, amen, without some marks in our body to testify, amen, that we stood for Christ in this life, amen. We're going to bear the marks in our body, amen, that we came through, amen, the struggle. We came through the fire, amen. But as the children, amen, of Hebrew boys, amen, came out of that fire with not a smell of smoke or not a hair singed, we too shall overcome, amen, and come up out of this land, amen, victorious in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, because he has proclaimed so. So all things work for our sakes. Or he said, it's for our sakes. What is he saying? We must have some good and bad. Well, I don't like that. I don't want the bad. I just want the good. If we always have good, where will our faith build from? I'll stand before you, and I'll be honest with you. I've struggled more in the good times than I have the bad times. My faith has been, amen, strengthened in the bad times. But in the good times, when the money's flowing, everybody's happy, the bills is paid, no trouble at my house, everything's good, you would think that's when we would shout, amen, and we do. But the longer we stay in that blessing, the more we begin to pull away from God. Amen, we don't think about Him as much. He's not on our heart. We're not praying. We're not seeking Him like we should, amen. Why? Because, well, everything's good. I got more time to visit and talk with people. Were well, you talking about the Lord? Well, a little bit, but then we get talking about other things. In other words, I'm not as sharp as I ought to be. My conversation's not pointed, amen, at Christ, amen, in the eternal kingdom. In other words, when you're in the valley, come on now, when you get down in the valley, amen, and somebody comes to your house, what do you want to talk about? Hey, let's talk about God, amen. Hey, amen, I want some encouragement. I need some help. Uh, in other words, I ain't got time to talk about the ball game. Uh, I ain't got time to talk about this side or the other. Uh, I'm in the midst of hell here on earth. I'm going through something. Uh, I need to get close to God, amen. Uh, and everything you do, amen, is about trying to get closer to Him. Why? Because you feel the opposition, you feel the pressure, you feel the pain. You feel, it's real. When you're on the mountain and everything's going along fine, we tend to get a little lazy and a little lackadaisical in our prayer life, in our worship, our reading, our studying, our doing what God would have us to do. He said all things, amen, here, this is for our sakes. Why? Let's look at this. Amen. Knowing that uh, he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also, our foundation Amen. It's got to be that, amen, we're going to live again. Amen. In other words, that gives me my hope, amen, that this is not all there is. You say, Brother Chris, I like this life. Well, I do too. But my far more of what I'm looking forward to is what is to come. Amen. I'm looking forward to that much more than I am the here and now. As much as I'm blessed, as much as I'm favored, as much as I love God, my family, my friends, everything God's blessed me with, I don't want to miss eternity for anything that's here. Hallelujah. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. So he gives glory here to God by saying it this way. All the things we go through are for our sakes, the good and the bad. They bring us to a place that if we through thanksgiving of many, the abundant grace of God might continue to flow to the glory of God. In other words, amen, when I understand whatever I'm going through, uh, it's for my good, not for my bad. 
Amen. How many testify with me now? When God saved your soul, amen, he made a promise to you, amen, to lift you up, amen, to never leave you nor forsake you, to make you the head and not the tail, uh, to cause you to go over and not go under, amen. He gave you a promise that where he was, you would be also. Uh, he's not forgotten you or forsaken you, and what you go through, amen, will not destroy you if you look to him. It can't destroy me. I don't care what it is. It cannot defeat me if I know, amen, who my Lord and Savior is. If I have confidence in my God, amen, and that he saved me at Calvary, amen, and I identify with him through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, amen, and if I walk in the forgiveness and the favor of God, uh, nothing, amen, formed against me shall prosper, amen. No weapon formed against me, amen, can tear me down. There is nothing, amen, that the enemy can bring, amen, that can cause me to lose out with God. If I continue to look to him, why? Because he ain't going to let it happen. I belong to him. The enemy ain't just fighting against you and me, but he's fighting against, amen, God himself. Amen. And who we identify through Jesus Christ. Amen. He sent his son where? Into this world. Amen. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. The promise has been given. Amen. I will not forsake you. So we understand something this morning. All things. Now, he said all things work together for good. Amen. To them that love the Lord and are looking for his glorious appearing. Now, understand this. There's going to be some good and bad in our life. And when I look to him, knowing that I'm a child of God, knowing he's not going to let me down, when I believe that and I have faith and I trust in that, that he's not going to forsake me, that whatever comes my way is not to destroy me, but it is to build me. It is to give me strength. It means I must look at it as an opportunity, amen, to get, amen, where God wants me to be. Not as an opportunity to tear me down, but as a building block, amen, a stepping stone uh, to get to where God wants me to be. Do we look at our troubles that way? Is that how we really look at our opposition? If we will look at our opposition, amen, which is the enemy of our soul, amen, understanding he's already defeated. Now, his defeating or his, de uh, his being defeated, amen, has not come to fruition, amen, as that he is uh, 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 taken away where he cannot tempt or destroy us, amen. He's judged, amen, he will be defeated at the time that God says, amen, that he'll be cast into hell. But in the meantime, uh, his position is to tear down or to tear away the child of God, amen, to try to defeat, amen, you and I. So in this time frame, he's doing everything he can to, amen, come against us. But when I understand, amen, that he can't cross the bloodline, when I understand, amen, that Jesus Christ has sealed me into the day of redemption, amen, uh, by his blood, amen, I'm covered, amen, I'm a child of God, amen. And when I look to him, amen, and I evidence my faith in him, uh, the devil has no right. He cannot come and defeat me. He can come against me. Amen. But can I tell you something? The house that is built in Christ, amen, will stand. Amen. Paul said, lay no other foundation except that which is laid in Christ. Amen. For whatsoever a man build on this foundation, whether it be gold, silver, amen, or precious stone, amen, amen, it shall stand in the day of judgment. But if that man build upon that precious foundation, hay, wood, or stubble, he said, when it goes through the fire, amen, it shall be burnt up. What is he saying, amen? You be careful what you build uh, on this foundation of Christ, amen. Uh, but he did tell us, amen, that whenever we stand in him, that he would make a way for us. Amen. What are you building today in your life with God? All right, so now moving on. All things for our sakes. Amen. That through, amen. The abundant, or through the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Understanding, amen, as we go through the trouble and the trials of life, good and bad, amen, as we go through life, we give thanksgiving to God 
for everything that happens, amen, whether good or bad. In other words, I'm not turned away from God because today I'm going through something bad. And then when it passes and a little bit of good happens, then I run back to God, amen. No, I'm with God, amen, in the good times and the bad times, amen. Because, amen, I've come to the understanding, amen, through this time of years of trouble and trial and sh uh, all the things that have come out, amen, uh, I've learned something, amen, that if I'll stay with him, amen, I'll have victory. That's maturity. Amen. That's, that's that maturity working. That's being defeated a few times. Amen. That's falling flat on your face a few times. Amen. That's standing before God or kneeling before God and saying, God, forgive me because I, I messed up. God, I failed you. God, I, I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. God, will you forgive me? Please, God, I stand before you and I ask to cleanse me. Amen. And, and to renew in me a right spirit. God, forgive me. Wash me clean in your blood. Amen. And, and restore me. Amen. Under fellowship with you. That's falling before God a few times that I get to the place where I understand something. Amen. I don't think a man can stand true and faithful in God until he's fallen a few times. Amen. Some people don't agree with that. And they got saved. They got perfect. I, I didn't. Amen. I struggled. Amen. But I didn't give up because God didn't give up on me. And the more I failed, amen, the more I got to the place where I say, son, you got to change some things. You got to get closer to God. You got to seek him. You got to get a hunger and a thirst after you, amen. And that's when I begin to talk about people, amen, getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you want more of God, amen, than you want of anything else in this world, uh, whether that be the day you got saved or 10 years later, whenever that case may be, uh, but when you want more of him than you want of anything else, you're going to get that baptism. Amen. And however you want to feel about that, that's between you and the Lord. But, amen, I, I just I firmly believe, amen, that you've got to want him more than anything else in this world, amen, to receive that power that comes, amen, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't get it just because you walked in the back door of the church, amen. You're going to go through some things. You're going to fight through some things, amen. And you're going to get to the place where you realize, hey, I've got to have more of him than I do of anything else, amen. Amen, for this cause which we faint not, but though the outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Every day, amen, you and I are drawing closer to the end, amen, that this whole life here knows. Amen. He said it this way. Now look at here. For all things are for your sakes. In other words, everything you go through, this is Paul encouraging, amen, the church at Corinth. Everything you go through is for your sake. That simply means, amen, that God is allowing things to happen, good and bad, amen, for the betterment of you. It's for your sake, amen, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many be redound to the glory of God. That whenever we give praise, honor, and glory to God in the good and the bad, uh, amen, when we're uh, able, amen, and willing to praise God through all that and to give God the praise and glory, amen, he continues to pour out abundant grace, amen. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, how many of you want abundant grace? Might through the thanksgiving of many, as many continue to praise him, amen, that it can continue to flow because when you quit praising God, you're going to quit receiving the blessings of God. Amen. I'm not saying God sat up there taking a tally count, but I'm saying this, amen. As long as you may be in the valley, you may be the bug instead of the windshield, you may be underneath the mountain, it may be on top of you, uh, but if you're still, amen, with every little ounce of sin, you've given praise, honor, and glory to God, uh, amen, and you're weak and stayed, amen. Uh, your body's tired, amen. Your family's been almost destroyed. You've lost your job, amen. You have no hope, amen, seemingly, but there's a little ounce in you that cries out, uh, Heavenly Father, I I know you hear me underneath this mountain. Uh, Father, I know you know where I'm at. Uh, and with everything that's hitting me with the last ounce of breath I got, uh, I'm going to send up one more praise uh, to you. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, he's going to dispatch, amen, uh, all the help in heaven, amen, to come uh, to your aid, amen, to crack that mountain, lift it up, get it off of you, uh, and restore you to where he wants you to be. Why? I did say that he wouldn't let it come to you, though. Amen. But you've got to be willing to praise Him. And when we do, amen, through the thanksgiving, that abundant grace can continue. Grace is simply the unmerited favor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I like grace. Amen. I thank God for grace. Amen. But though our outward man perish, amen, he said, even though the grace of God continues to flow, 
because many are still thanks or praising him, giving glory and honor to God. It's hard, amen, to thank God in the bad times. It's hard to bow your head and from the humbleness of heart and from a sincerity in your heart to say, God, I, I praise you for this storm. That's not an easy thing to do. Amen. It's not a, 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 a thing that comes natural. But amen, we're not natural anymore, amen. We're supernatural, amen. In the meanings, amen, that the supernatural precious blood of Jesus Christ, amen, has strengthened us, encouraged us, saved us, amen, and caused us, amen, to be able to do things we could not do before. i tell you something you couldn't do before. You couldn't love your enemies. You couldn't pray for them to despitefully use you. Amen. You couldn't pray for their healing and for their, amen, for their goodness to fall out further for them. No, you wouldn't do that. But now that Jesus Christ lives on the inside, amen, you can see the eternal damnation, amen, and you don't want nobody, amen, to face that, that hellfire for eternity, amen. Why? Because through Jesus Christ, amen, now the knowledge, amen, of eternity is real. And now I have a desire to go to be with him, amen. And I'm looking forward to that day, amen. And Paul here is giving the church at Corinth some encouragement. And he says, for this cause we faint not. Why? That the abundant grace continues to flow. Even whenever we're in good or bad times, we continue to praise God. God continues to make a way for the child of God. And for this reason, we don't faint. Amen. It's for this reason we don't back up. It's for this reason we continue to move forward. Why? Because we trust God. Amen. That he's going to make a way. This outward man is dying daily. But this inward man... That which shall never taste death again. Uh, he died, amen, at Beulah Church, amen, on an altar of prayer. That old man died, amen. I left him buried there, amen. And one day, amen, this whole body here is going to die the natural death. Uh, but that which is on the inside will never taste death again. He shall live on. Amen. Hallelujah. And for which cause we faint not. It's for this reason, amen, that I don't give up, Brother Robbie. It's for this reason I don't sit down and quit. Because I know that I know that I know that I have been born again. And that my name is written in heaven. And that though this world may pass away, my eternal weight, my eternal home, that for which I am sealed, amen. Whenever Jesus said, you're a part of me and I'm a part of you, amen. When he came in and made himself real to me and he said, I go away, amen, to prepare you a place. Uh, but when I come again, I'll receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. Uh, I'm looking forward to that promise, amen. I hold to it dearly every day because this ain't all there is. And what's coming is far better than what we have here. That's my foundation. It's in Christ. And it's in the promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And so, uh, uh, though uh, for this cause or it's for which cause we faint not. Amen. Because I know I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Able to fight the enemy in this life and looking forward to that which is to come. I don't faint. I don't back up. I don't stop. Even though my outward man is perishing every day. Even though this body's getting older. I told my wife, she said, are you already ready for church? I said, yeah, I got to hurry up and get to Sunday school. I'm running behind. I bent over to put my sock on, and it slipped out of my hand. And I just, that little four or five inches, I just reached further to get it. I pulled something in my back. And, man, I just sat straight up like that. And I was like, good gracious, now I can't even hardly breathe. And to take a breath in, it was just hurting. Well, I walked around for two or three minutes. She gave me some medicine. I walked out the door. Amen. But can I tell you, I don't feel no pain right now. Amen. It may, whenever the anointing goes away, it may come back. But right now, amen, I can breathe and I can move, amen, as good as God needs me to. But I understand something here. This outward man's perishing day by day. It's going away. It's getting weaker. It's getting older. The eyes are getting dim. Amen. The hands are growing weak. Amen. The knees are getting tired. Amen. We're, amen, progressing towards, amen, that natural death. But though this is knowledge, though we have this knowledge, yet our inward man is being renewed day by day. We're being encouraged, amen, for that which is important. Amen. We're being strengthened, amen, for that which is to come. Amen. I don't know about you, but I look forward more to going to heaven today than I ever have any time before. Hallelujah. For our light affliction. For our light affliction. <laughs> Amen. All we've gone through, Paul is saying, it's but a light affliction. 
if there was any man that could identify with suffering, it was Paul. If there was any man that suffered for the cause of Christ, it was Paul. Amen. If there's any man that can stand up and say, I did the best I could with what I was given. And for this, I have fought. I have been jailed. I have been in prison. He said, I've suffered at the hands of those that love me. I've suffered at the hands of those that hated me. He said, in perils, often, amen, by my countrymen and by those that were already opposed to me. He said, in the cities, I was beaten and I was, amen, left forgotten. Amen. He said, but the angel of the Lord came by and stood with me and he strengthened me and he picked me back up. Amen. And we preached the message, amen, where after they beat him and took him out the city of Ephesus and laid him on the, amen, the outskirts of town, amen. Uh, it was a few hours later, the spirit came back in him uh, and he marched right back into town and he continued to preach on. Uh, why? Because he looked, amen, uh, to the father of Ephesus, uh, amen. He looked to the author and the finish of his faith. Uh, he knew, amen, what he needed to do for the kingdom of God. He knew, amen, the struggle. He understood, amen, that anything that comes against me, uh, it's not to destroy me, but it's to strengthen me and to help me. Why? Because the more I do for him, the more I'm going to face. And then we get to the crux of the problem. We've got so many that sat down because they don't want to fight. Don't want to go through nothing. I just want to kind of skate by. I just want to kind of, Lord, just let me kind of get through there the best way that we can. Amen. There's some that has taken up the bloodstained banner. Amen. And they've grabbed a hold of their sword. And they've got that shield, amen. They've got that helmet of salvation. They've got on the breastplate of righteousness, amen. They've shod their feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, amen. And they've gathered up, amen. And they said, let's march on, amen. And they're fighting everything tooth and nail, amen, to key, amen, to get to the kingdom of God. And then we've got some that sat back and won't give no effort, no support. Which one are we this morning? Which one are we this morning? Paul said it's but a light affliction. Amen. The child of God under the influence, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing, amen, that I've been saved. Amen. Not to sit back, amen, and to try to squeeze through. Amen. But I've been given victory, amen, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have victory, amen, through Jesus over the world, the flesh, and the devil, amen. Amen. It's by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, that I can, amen, overcome. Uh, would we not want to take up, amen, uh, that which God has given us uh, and march on? Understanding, amen, that what comes against us is a light affliction. When you can look at it, when you can honestly look at it as a light affliction, amen, you can have victory over it. Amen. I'm going to close with this. The Bible says that there was a young man named David. Amen. A young man named David. At this time, David was not a king. He was a young boy. Amen. He was nothing but a young boy. But the Bible says that he had, amen, uh, instructions from his father to tend to the sheep. So we understand something. From David's early days, he had a love of the father Amen. And he had a recompense, amen, unto his father's word. In other words, he, he held to his father's word. He honored, amen, that which his father commanded him to do. Amen. And he took, amen, the word from his father, and he applied, amen, that same fervor, amen, to taking care of what his father said to tend to. So when the enemy came uh, to try to steal, amen, of his father's sheep, uh, he fought against it, amen, uh, with the integrity, amen, that he had before his father, amen. He didn't say, well, father won't miss one. Uh, I don't want to get in that fight. He ain't going to miss that one little old sheep. Uh, let me tell you something as we stand in here today, amen. Uh, I've been given the position of shepherd, amen, uh, and all of us in here, amen, has been given the position, amen, uh, to fight against the enemy, amen. Uh, and I don't want one sheep stolen, amen from my heavenly father amen and we better amen look at it this way uh, amen that what God has given us amen we better fight for amen if your father means anything to you amen if he means anything to you then you're going to have a respect unto his will and what his desire is and my Bible tells me God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son he loves every every everybody Oh, we can't say, well, God won't miss that one. We'll just let the wolf get that one. He never done nothing for the church. 
He was an alcoholic. God won't miss that one. Can I tell you, there was a drop of bloodshed for that one. David had respect to his father's will. And he used that. In other words, that meant something to him. The integrity, amen, to stand before his father, amen, and to say, I have done all that I could do, Father, meant something to him. So he fought, amen, with the sheep or with the lion. Amen. The Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him. And he was able, amen, to wrestle and get that sheep back. And he slew that lion. Not in his own ability, but in God's anointing. Amen. He overcame the enemy that was trying to steal from his father. Hallelujah. Amen. The time passed. David grew stronger. Amen. And a bear came. And tried, amen, to stake from his father's sheep. David, even though he has grown a, a little bit in this time period, uh, he still had a recompense, amen, to the reward of his father. He still, amen, had a desire to please his father. He hadn't gotten to the place where he knows how to do everything now uh, and no longer needs God. Uh, but he still, amen, wants to stand uh, right before his father. And when the bear came, amen, the Holy Ghost anointed him. Amen. He had a heart to please the Father. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. When you have a heart to please the Father, amen, the Spirit of God, amen, will give you the ability to stand, amen, against whatever comes, amen. You will not be defeated, amen, if you look to the Father. A few years pass. The sons, amen, David's brothers go to war. The Bible says that there was a hillside. And the Philistines camped on one side. And the children of Israel with Saul as their captain camped on the other side. At this time, the children of Israel have requested a king to be placed over them. And the Bible says that God called for Saul, told Samuel to go and anoint him. And he did. Poured the oil on him, anointed him king over Israel. Saul, a man, stood head and shoulders above any other man in Israel. But this day, when he looks out in that valley and he sees a man like no other man before, he sees a giant. He ain't just fighting against something that he feels like he can win, but this is bigger than he is. And it's got him standing there shaking on the side of the mountain. I can tell you something today. There's too many in the church house standing or sitting, squatting on the side of the hill instead of being in the valley, amen, doing what God had happened to do. If we understand it's nothing but a light affliction and we've been given victory and power, amen, we can overcome it if we would just simply go forward, amen, and let God bless, amen, and let God's will be done, amen. It shall not defeat us. David comes up. The whole camp of Israel's on the hillside. Hears vulgarity in the valley shouting up against his God, cursing the God of Israel. Amen. With every uh, uh, foul thing you can think of, every foul spirit that you can imagine, amen. He's standing down there in the valley, amen, daring any man to come and to fight against him. This is what the enemy's doing to you and I. He's a daring you to fight. Two things happen when you're challenged. You fight or you flight. You fight or you flight. Can I tell you, the child of God... Is going to fight. The one that has a head knowledge of who God is is going to fly. They can't stand the heat. They're not going to stand in the battle. Amen. This is the problem we've got with the men of Israel at this time. Amen. They've got a head knowledge. Amen. They've got a, a sacrifice they made that a priest stood in there. Amen. And he played over it and blessed over it. Amen. That's the only relationship with God they've got. Amen. But there's little David. Amen. Who from the time he come up. Amen. Loved his father. Served his father. Amen. And whenever trouble came. Amen. The father anointed him. Amen. Not his earthly father but his heavenly father. Amen. And he knows now. Amen. I've been through some things. Amen. I, I stood up against this enemy. Amen. And I've got strength over him. Uh, if I'll just stand. Amen. Uh, and God will come. Amen. And God will make a way. Why? Because it ain't nothing against me. It's a lot of fiction. Amen. It can't overcome me. Why? Because God is with me. And knowing this, when he saw the enemy, his size didn't scare David. Amen. When he saw the enemy's armament, it didn't deter David. 
when he heard the shout of the enemy. Amen. It may have sounded like the voice of many waters. Amen. Uh, we've heard, amen, of God's uh, sound in his voice. Amen. We know the enemy tries to imitate God. Amen. And when I just got a feeling, amen, when Goliath stood in that valley and shouted, amen, it may have sounded like a thunder. It had the men of Israel scared. They've got no intimate knowledge with God. Amen. They've got a head knowledge but not a heart knowledge. But there's one here today that's got a heart knowledge of who Jehovah is. Whoo, it makes a difference. Amen. When Saul says, let me put this armament on you so you can go down there and fight. David shuts it off. Says, I didn't need that when I slew the lion. I didn't need that armament when I slew the bear. But he said, the Lord God of Israel, he's going to go before me this day. Amen. And on the way down there to face this enemy, amen, he happens to pick up five smooth stones. Amen. Many of things have been said. Why? I'm not going to try to add to it, but I'm going to simply say this. Amen. God gave him what he needed to do the job. When his faith was in God, God took care of it. But he had to move forward. He had to pick the stones up, and he had to be willing to fight. Knowing this, knowing this, amen, it's but a light affliction. Whatever we face in this life, it's not to destroy us, but it's to encourage us. It's to build us up. There's giants that we've got to fight. In the spiritual realm, there are giants that we've got to fight. There's not one of us that's made it home yet, amen. And as long as we're here in this life, we're going to fight, amen. In other words, we're going to fight a spiritual battle day in and day out. And this spiritual battle manifests itself a lot of times in the physical, amen. And as we go in the physical, so go we in the spiritual a lot of times. When we let things defeat us, let things destroy us in the natural, amen, we're also defeated in the spiritual. But if we'll look to God and realize and trust in Him, have faith in Him, realize that, hey, it may look bleak now. Hey, I may be in a season of darkness. I may be in a time, amen, where everything seems like it's going against me. But you just hold on because the answer's coming. Help's are coming. I know where, amen, I know where my help comes from. I don't understand why it's taking God as long as it is, uh, but I'm not going under. I'm going over, amen. And it's only a matter of time, amen. Why? Because this thing ain't but a light thing concerning God. I like the old song the McCamey sang. Amen. It's just a, uh, your problem is, is, is a mountain to you, but it's just a, an anthill from heaven's point of view. Amen. It may look big to you. Amen. But it's nothing concerning God. Amen. Do you face the mountain alone or do you face the mountain with God? It makes a difference. When you face the mountain alone, amen, it's a thing that you can't overcome. But when you stand before the mountain, and you have the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen. You can speak to the mountain and say, Mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Amen. It can't stay there no longer. It's got to go. Why? Why? Because from heaven's point of view, that mountain is just a pebble. And he picks it up because he says, My child has evidenced faith in me. He didn't stand at that mountain and beg and cry and plead and carry on with anything else. But he simply said, Move, move in the name of Jesus. God will respond. God will respond to your faith. It's a light affliction when you know who your God is. It's a light affliction. It's just a light affliction. Brother Chris, you don't understand. No, it's just a light affliction. Brother Chris, I'm going, it's a light affliction. Brother Chris, it's a light affliction. If you don't understand how big it is, then you don't understand how big my God is. God is bigger than any mountain that comes against our way. God is bigger than any problem that I can or cannot see. Well, he's a bigger than... Get the meaning. God is bigger than it. It's a light affliction when you know who God is. I love you today. Amen. Appreciate all of you this morning. Appreciate the visitors. Appreciate our families, our loved ones. We love you and we thank you this morning. Amen. We've got an opportunity to pray before we leave today. Amen. It's, it means a lot to me. Amen. To see the house of God. Amen. Be lifted up and blessed. And God's people. Amen. Be encouraged. Amen. And for the children of God to seek Him with their whole hearts. Amen. And I just want to give you an opportunity today to pray. If you will, let's all stand all over the house. Amen. The Lord knows the need. He knows your problem. He knows your situation. God knows what you're going through. 
And whenever you look at your problem, amen, and you declare how big a God you serve and that God's the, amen, over everything in your life and that he's the, amen, you belong to God, amen, there's no problem that can defeat you. There's nothing, amen, that can come against you, amen. Isaiah said it the best. He said, there's no weapon, amen, formed against you that shall prosper, amen. That's all of Satan's devices. Anything that Satan can devise to try to come against you, it will not defeat, amen, you if you look to God. The author and the finish of your faith for help. I love you today. This altar is open while we pray. If there be one that needs to pray today, we're going to give you the opportunity to come forward. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you this day, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to look over every heart. Lord, you know the need today, Father, and you know the soul's desire, Father, to reach out to you. Father, you know every person, Lord, that's in this room today. Lord, you know their situation. Father, you know their heart, Lord. You know where they stand with you. Father, if they'd be one today that don't know you, Father, Lord, only in head knowledge, Father.